What's up you guys, my name's Hutch, I make videos, put them on the internet, and this is another edition of Ask Hutch. I decided to put some gameplay in the background this time so you have something fun to watch. Uh, there's a lot of questions so I'm just gonna jump right into it. FR Priest says, what are your opinions on rap? Uh, there's definitely been a lot of artists in my life that, uh, that I've loved that have been hip hop artists like Lauryn Hill, The Fugees, uh, The Roots, Jurassic 5, uh, Tupac, Big E, um, the list goes on and on and on, but these days, rap just isn't cutting it for me. Maybe I haven't, I mean, I don't know. I don't listen to the radio at all. I don't really use Pandora or Spotify all that much. So there's not really a way for me to find new hip hop stuff. Uh, but I mean, it's 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 been a long time since I've, I've really enjoyed uh, a rap artist. Steven wants to ask, uh, have you come to set any long-term future goals or are you just living life? Um, I would say that I have a lot of short-term goals. And I have some, like, maybe possibles in my mind for stuff down the line. But for me in my life, I, f I feel like it's been more productive for me just to focus on the here and now and making uh, making whatever I'm a part of now be the best it can, it can be. Like, when I do that, I experience, like, my own version of success. A my life has been so... It's been such a good example of if you just if you work hard and if you if you put a lot of yourself and you put a lot of passion into something that you love doing, then it can just work out. I never could have planned for this. And if I would have planned for anything else and then put YouTube on the back burner, then none of this would have happened. And so that's sort of shaped my philosophy when it comes to when it comes to setting goals for myself. OK, this one's from David Collins. He says, would you go back to playing games in an office with Sark and Nanners again without the work or do you prefer alone? Um, I think I prefer both. Um, I think both have merit. Like, I really enjoy, I, I feel like technically I'm probably more productive here by myself. But as far as, um, like creatively, as far as, uh, like saying the funniest jokes I could possibly say or being as entertaining as I can possibly be. I think that those guys definitely brought that out of me. And so I miss that. Sometimes I wish that there was, uh, that there was someone to bounce off of in my day to day, but, uh, that's not what, that's not what the life of a YouTuber is unless you run like a collaborative channel, but I don't. So C Griff says how to get back into the dating game after a long hiatus. I'm 26. Uh, well, Tinder, bro. I mean like not even just Tinder, but, uh, the internet, I feel, just makes it so easy. Like, if you want to get, if, if you want to go on a date with someone, sit down, have a cup of coffee, uh, discuss worldly things, you can do that. And if you want to find someone that you just want to bone, and they're just looking to bone as well, you can do that as well. Uh, you can fine tune what you're looking for on the internet to such a specific degree that it is. Um, I mean, and for guys, you know, for, for a lot of guys, it's it's like a numbers game, but whatever. I mean, just play the game and eventually you'll find someone. Blake has all the cake, says, what's your favorite Monopoly squares to control? Colors or squares to control? Uh, I think my mind has been set on, like a lot of people prefer the heavy hitters, like the yellows and the greens, but I'm saying orange and red, I think that's like the prime real estate because if that, everybody has to pass by that spot when they go out of jail and there's a lot of cards that bring you right back to that area and it's good stuff, man. Yellow, uh, I'm sorry, orange and, and red have to be my favorite. Ali Vale says, what were you like in school? So early on in school, I was very hyper. I was very, uh, I was very outgoing, but it was like, I, I also had this like naivete that like transcended being a child. So it was more than just being a child. Like I was hyperly enthusiastically outgoing and people didn't really like me. Like when I was really little and I was, it wasn't like I was oblivious to that, but I just, it, it, it didn't deter me from being like just sort of crazy and wacky all the time. Like I had, I, I feel like I've had it in me to try and make people laugh my whole life. I mean, I think that that was a way bigger priority for me growing up in school than actual academics were. Thank God after I graduated high school, I kind of developed my own thirst for like knowledge. Um, so I, you know, I didn't end up being, I didn't end up being a, a total idiot, but, um, yeah, I would say that I was just kind of like a goofy class clown. 
Drew Bailey asks, what is going on with Podcast and Chill, and when when can we expect the next one? We just recorded the we just recorded the next one. I want to put it up on Friday and then record the next one on Monday. I would like for us to record on Mondays and then upload on Friday. Uh, and I think that's what we can do. I'm gonna double check with Gio and Eric. But uh, but yeah, I do a movie podcast. Uh, next next episode's coming out on Friday. Natural Noob says, do you feel that Twitch has done more for you in the sense of being able to live the life you now or you have now more than YouTube? I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't say that. I would say that. Uh, I would say that. You know, my life, my life post YouTube has been. I mean, about as different as 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 a as a life can be from a from a previous life. You know, it was it was really really drastic. So YouTube has made uh, I mean quite quite the mark on my life. I don't think I, I mean it would be it would be really hard to compete with that. What Twitch has done is it it has allowed me to um, establish sort of like a rhythm for myself, like a schedule, like some kind of structure. So I wake up, I et, you know, I make myself uh, breakfast and watch a show. I edit, I upload, I start the stream, and I, uh, you know, when my girlfriend comes home, I stop the stream and, and uh, usually cook up some dinner. And um, I was lacking that before. I think part of that is also having a girlfriend and like living with your girlfriend is you know adds structure to your life. Uh, but Twitch has has really, and it's also allowed me to get to know you guys a lot better because. There's a lot of people that, that have been watching my videos for years, and then once they became regular regular stream watchers, I actually started having you know conversations with them and uh, and getting to know getting to know them that way. So Twitch, I mean, I, I'd say in the late in the late game, Twitch has been like really invaluable to me, and I don't you know I I, I think I'd be really 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 struggling and hurting right now if 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 I didn't find that. Um, uh, but yeah, YouTube, I think is always for me going to be the, I mean, it's just, it's really hard to top what YouTube did for my life. Anthony Pichette says, what kind of sickness have you lied about? So you wouldn't have to go to work. Okay. So the worst thing that I've ever said to a boss to get out of going, going to work is I told her that my cousin died in a car accident. Now you have to look at it from my point of view. My mom was one of 13 kids and I have like hundreds of cousins. It's just stupid how many cousins I have. So in my mind, I wasn't thinking of a particular cousin. I was just thinking of just like this nebulous blob. And I just used the word cousin. IB Farmer says, what's the most embarrassing way you've tried to get a lady? Uh, I can't think of anything. I mean, the only thing I can think that was embarrassing was, uh, okay. So I asked this girl, to homecoming my sophomore year of high school and she was a new girl and that you know I was really I, I was a really insecure kid and so I thought because she's new she doesn't know how uncool I am so I'm gonna you know I'm gonna focus on her I'm gonna get you know I'm gonna have a crush on her and then she's gonna be my girlfriend or something like that I don't know what was going on in my head but uh, we, we we went to homecoming I held her hand uh, we danced all night and then the next day I remember calling her and then asking her out but it took me like I would dial like six digits of her phone number and then hit end like 50 times before I finally hit you know the last number and then just waited and it was a really pathetic pitch it was just like hey Chandra good how are you? good good yeah um I had a really good time at homecoming and I wanted to know if you wanted to be my girlfriend and then like I had it was like this really rehearsed Oh, it was so bad. And her response was just like, no, I don't want that. No, we can still be friends though. And we were still friends after that. It was a little emasculating, but hey, you know, whatever. Some call me screamy says, how did you treat gaming when you were depressed? And how did you treat it as you decided you were going to try and get better? Uh, when, okay. So like there've been a couple times I've had, I've had two two episodes of like pretty, pretty deep depression in the last like five years. Um, less than that actually. No, it's about five years. Yeah. It's about five years. Um, and I'd say like the, f I don't know, like I, I, I definitely think that I, I, I'm, I, if I'm down, if I'm, if I'm in a real low place, you know, uh, then video games can be kind of counterproductive. It's, it's, I feel like it's better probably to be outside talking to people, and you know, establishing relationships and then nourishing those relationships and letting those relationships give you insight and 
you know, potentially even help you to get out of a depression. It's really hard to do that when you're playing video games for like eight hours a day, even when it's your job. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I would, I think I would play a lot less when I was depressed. I think that's true. Yeah. I think I would play a lot less compared to when I'm just doing fine. Yeah. Joaquim Warholm says, would you terminate your unborn baby if it had an illness such as Down syndrome? What the fuck, Joaquin? Billy Joe Johnson, what do you believe is your best quality as a friend? What do you give your friends that make them enjoy being around you? Um, I think like I try to give what I value most in friendships, which is showing up. I think friendship is a verb. I think friendship and, and love. I think both of those things are verbs more than they are nouns because they're just too abstract. Is what does a friend mean to you? I don't know. So like I, I say, I, I mean, you can you can never go wrong with always being the one that shows up. So if your friend invites you to something that's really important to them, you show up. If your friend calls you at two o'clock in the morning because their ass is falling off and they feel like their whole world's crumbling, you show up. You pick up the phone. You you know maybe if you, if you got a loved one, go into the other room if it's going to be a long conversation. But don't make excuses and and you know really really go out of your way to let someone know that that you think that they're um, that the, go out of your way to let someone know that you mean something to them. And and I feel like that pays more dividends than anything else. I think most people just want to feel wanted. They want to feel valued. And whenever you do that for them in in a friendly kind of role, then. Um, it just kind of it's like making deposits in a bank and you just like keep making these deposits and pretty soon by the end of it you're just like extremely wealthy with friendship okay thomas wants to ask what's your advice on dating someone who's moving away in the summer after she graduates college uh i like her a lot i would you know man i would say managing your expectations would be probably your your biggest priority because if you open up those floodgates in your heart and just like really just fully invest in someone. And like I imagine sort of like what they did in Avatar where they just bonded like that. If you're doing that in a, in a you know, in a romantic sense with someone right as they're about to leave, then you might be setting yourself up for some like really tough times down the road. I mean, you know that it's going to be tough regardless. You know that if you guys stay together and uh, and she moves away, it's going to be tough. And you and you know that it's going to be tough if you, if you guys end up breaking up. So I would I, I mean if I were you, I would I would really um, I mean first of all I would focus on the time that you 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 still have with her. You know that's a really fun time, especially when you're young. I, w I would focus on you know enjoying that and and try not to think too much about what's going to happen down the line. And then once you're actually presented with it, then I'd say both of you just need to take like an honest inventory of how you feel about it. And uh, you know I think that there's like there's also there's also some benefits when it comes to long distance relationships because uh, and I think I've talked about this before in videos, but. The benefit of, you know, one of the biggest benefits of a long distance relationship is you don't get to see each other very often, right? And so when you do get to see each other, it's this really kind of magical time. And, and that person kind of feels like your island, you know, you feel you feel like you have your own little world with this person. And that's only reinforced when you only get to see them like once a month or something. You know, when, when you're in that bubble with them, it really is a, a, a wonderful thing. Um, so I would say that long distance relationships aren't, aren't impossible. They're, they're tough. I mean, I'm, in a lot of ways, they're easier than, in, than, uh, than uh, not long distance relationships because uh, you're not confronted with someone's shortcomings or your own shortcomings every day like you would be if they were right there. Uh, I don't know if this was too long window of an answer, but there you go. Overzealous wants to ask, have you ever gone to a strip club? If yes, what was your experience like? If not, will you ever go to one? Uh, so I've been to, uh, quite a few strip clubs in my life. I wouldn't say, I mean, I would say if I had to guess like probably like nine or 10, maybe. And the most memorable strip club story I can tell you happened in New Zealand. And, uh, me and Diesel and, uh, and, and his, his wife at the time and uh, a couple other people were there. And on the last night before I was leaving to go to Australia for a week, we, we went out and hit the town because we had been doing this 24-hour live stream and we didn't really leave. Uh, I was over there, like Kim.com invited me over there. And so I stayed at Kim.com's fucking mansion for like two and a half weeks. It was crazy. But uh, we went to downtown Auckland and we found this strip club because I was, I, I, I think I was pretty drunk pretty quickly. It was like 5, 5 p.m. and I was just ready to party. And uh, we, so we end up at this strip club and um, I swear to God, I fell in love. And her name was Gemma. And... Uh, 
and and I I mean I I think I spent f five or six hundred dollars on on Je on a lap dance with Gemma, and then uh, and then I had given Mike uh, I had given Diesel my credit card. And I said, hang on to this and don't give it back to me later, no matter what I say. And like a horrible friend, all I had to do was walk up to him after I had already spent like $500. I was like, Mike, I need my card. Give it to me. And Mike was just like, what? what? And I was just like, I need, don't, Mike, don't fuck with me right now. I need my card. So I got the card. And when you go to this strip club in, in, in Auckland, you have to go change cash out for like space bucks. They look like they give you these wads of fake money. And so I had all this fake money. I don't even remember how much I took out. And I just went back to Gemma. I was like, how much can this buy me? And she just goes, oh, sweetie, come with me. <laughs> it was like, I think that was the funnest night slash most frustrating night at a strip club of my life. Uh, but that's my strip club story. And I think I'm going to end it there, guys. Thank you so much for all your questions. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more of them in the comments. And uh, say what's up to me on Twitter. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.